So I find it kind of interesting that the housing market in such a short period of time has gone from everything is awesome, home price appreciation still going up, to today where we're hearing, well, we could have 15, 20, 25 percent, 30 percent property value declines in a couple of years. Welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Today is the 17th of August. Randy Patrick here putting the realism back in real estate. Hope everyone's having a great end of the summer. This video is brought to you by our friends at foreclosure.com. So if you want to find out and check out the distressed property listings in your backyard, your neck of the woods, go to get housingdata.com. That's gethousingdata.com. That's my affiliate link. Check it out. There's a free trial. You can actually see what I'm talking about and you can actually see the foreclosures, the pre-foreclosures, the tax deed sales, other distressed property peg count volume increasing on a daily basis. So this actually came the other day. I thought it was very interesting. So it's, it's from Fitch Ratings. This is obviously an article on fortune.com. Fitch Ratings saying the U.S. housing prices could soon fall 10 to 15 percent. So basically, the pandemic housing boom is given away to the pandemic housing slump, which we all know. Obviously, the reason being spiked mortgage rates, mortgage uh, applications for purchasing a refis are down, single family housing starts are down. And this is a key point here. The Federal Reserve has made it clear this housing slump is by design. As we've mentioned before, the Federal Reserve came out quite blatantly, quite openly, and stated that the housing market needs to get reset. So speaking in today's, you know, we'll call it housing speak narrative, to me, you know, reset means crash. That's, just, that's how I interpret it. Well, uh, Fitch Ratings gave its outlook uh, on what's going to happen or how they're taking uh, the next steps in the housing market. Basically, they're saying that uh, we're looking at um, the likelihood of a severe downturn in U.S. Uh, housing has increased. However, our rating scenario uh, provides for a more moderate pullback that includes mid-single-digit decline in housing activity in 2023 and further pressure in 2024. All right, it makes sense. We'll see more activity or more slowdown, more price devaluation this year and into 2023 and then 2024 well further pressure they're not really saying what that is i can tell you what that is though um, although we recently affirmed the ratings and stable outlooks for u.s home builder portfolio ratings could face pressure under a more pronounced downturn scenario that would likely include housing activity falling by 30 percent over a multi-year period and 10 to 15 percent declines in home prices so you know these guys are saying moderate and it's 10 to 15 percent decline now why i mean i'll talk to you about this towards the end of the video about why i think this is you know this is a setup and this is just based on low inventory becoming more inventory uh, low interest rates becoming higher interest rates less bidding wars uh low low buyer sentiment so these guys are saying 10 to 15 percent is kind of what their outlook is uh the fact that fitch ratings even considers a 10 to 15 percent home price decline possibility is alarming if home prices actually fell 10 to 15 percent nationally, that would likely translate to 20 to 30 percent declines in some regional housing markets. So you see, they're talking nationally, uh, which means some markets will maybe not have as much on the decline or home price appreciation or loss. Some will be way more than the 10 to 15 percent. So it all averages out. Remember, last housing crisis, the average was about 27 and a half percent nationally across the board. That's obviously um, backed up by the Case Shiller statistics. We had markets that were five or ten percent down, and we had markets that were over fifty percent down. So it just depends on where you are, and you know we'll call it again um, that special word that we all like to use in the housing bubble, uh, you know, vernacular is the frothiness of your market. That's what's so funny. All right, so interesting. Um, basically, what they're saying here is that only the Great Depression and Great Recession have seen price cuts of this magnitude. If home prices actually fell 15%, we'd likely see the pandemic housing be remembered as the pandemic housing bubble. You're right, because if home prices drop 15%, which I truly think they will, um, people will start to panic and they'll start to, dr to drop prices further and pour, put more properties on the market, causing further seller competition, which means prices will drive down. So yes, um, this is how it all starts. It's typically a snowball effect and people have to jump on to sell when they can. Now, of course, no one agrees with Fitch, not everyone, sorry, agrees with Fitch ratings. Over the coming year, the Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, CoreLogic, and Zillow all predict 
single digit rise in home prices? Well, of course they do, all right? They're not going to say that the market's going down the toilet. That's just tanking, okay? Uh, who are these people? Mortgage Bankers Association. Hmm, let's sell mortgages and make money. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Hmm, guess what? Government backing the mortgages. CoreLogic, big data company, okay? Works on mortgage data, MLS data. Zillow, we all know Zillow. Zillow going to come out and say, we're going to have a housing crash? They already had their own internal meltdown and crash last uh, September to November area, etc. with with their uh, iBind business. They're not going to say we're going to have problems. Guess what? Zillow Zestimates, it's all based on appreciating markets here, right? So, of course, they're not going to support a housing downturn. Now, Fitch Ratings isn't the only housing bear. Modest home price declines are currently forecasted by John Burns Real Estate Consulting. If you haven't checked him out, he's got a lot of good information. Capital Economies, Zellman Associates, Associates, and Zonda. Meanwhile, economist Robert Schiller, we can't forget good old Robert Schiller, the co-creator of the Case Schiller Home Price Index, who predicted the 2008 housing crash, agrees with Fitch ratings that a greater than 10% home price dip could be in the cards. As I mentioned in my last video regarding what Robert Schiller was saying, you know, it's all about dipping your toe into the water. So people are not going to come out and go, we're going to have a housing crash, we're going to drop 50%. No one wants to go on record to say that. It would be career suicide for sure. Uh, but again, you know, when we're being moderate, moderate, modest, that's the word that's being used here. So that really means we're not going to step too far outside our box. We think there's some problems here. So this in itself, to me, is a big deal. If you follow housing like I do, understand the markets and, and, and predict and, and and participate, etc. This is a really big deal, more than people think it is. When you've got um, Fitch ratings and Robert Schiller saying, "Yeah, we're going to see a downturn, and it's going to be moderate. It's going to be you know 10 to 15 percent." You know, as they even said, other markets will be more. So yeah, this is a conservative estimate, all right? Because they all know if they say it's going to be greater, that's going to cause more financial instability and unrest affect stock prices across the board for different companies, etc. So they don't go out and, and call it basically you know, how they really see it happening. They're tempering this to at least give us some warnings here so they're not you know, they're not 100% or 180 degrees different than what's actually happening, but they're not going to call it how it's really going to play out here. So housing is believed to be structurally undersupplied, uh, blah, blah, blah. We're not under the belief that home prices only go up. Our forecast calls for a modest drop on housing prices. Again, like I said, no one's going to say we're going to have a market crash. They're going to say modest drop, moderate drop, correction, you know, um, whatever it is, getting things back in line, stability, etc. So if home price correction actually hits, it's likely the frothy markets, that's our favorite word, frothy, frothy markets like Boise, Phoenix, and Las Vegas that would get the hit the hardest. Now, uh, Phoenix and Las Vegas did get uh, massacred in the last housing crisis. It's no, uh, no secret that's going to happen again. And as I said, a lot of the same locations that got taken out pretty pretty badly last time through. They're on the block again, plus a few new ones. So uh, I, like that sort of, you know, what's the old saying? The bigger they come, the harder they fall. The bigger the home price appreciation, the bigger the, the decline in valuation after the fact. So yeah, some of these locations like Austin and Boise and places that really went up big time um, will will be structured and, and set up for a pretty pretty big um, change in house price values as time goes on here. So remember, this is not just a, a one-year deal. This is going to go over, over the past couple of years, for the next couple of years. Oh, and by the way, guys, if you're not a subscriber and you appreciate the information I provide, please, if you'd help my channel grow, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. And if you are a subscriber, thank you for sticking with me all this time. And please, could you reaffirm your subscription because I lose subscribers every day. Thank you. All right, guys, let's keep moving on here. But what about the foreclosures? So let's just step, take a step back here, okay? You've basically got how many economists now saying slow down, downturn, home price decreases the whole bit. It's now, it's it's like we've tipped the scales. Before it was no, 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 no. We're, we're on to one side of the meter. Now we're on this side going, yeah, it's going to happen. So we've gone from, as I said, the euphoria of home price appreciation, nothing could go wrong, to we're in a bubble, the bubble's going to burst, the housing market's going to crash, to the fact that now there's predictions on just how much you know we're going to lose in that crash. So we've done a complete 180 from the beginning of the year to where we are now, which I find more interesting as as, as they goes on. But 
as I said, all this discussion is based on what? You know, mortgage rates, uh, inventory, less competition, uh, sellers reducing price points, home buyer sentiment being poor, overbuilding and builders uh, you know being too euphoric and, and having to pull back now, now reducing their price points, okay? Um, housing starts slumping, all that type of stuff. So all of that is based on today's information of what's going on in the marketplace. But what about the foreclosures? So here's kind of the tipping scale, is that we've talked about all this stuff, but we've not once mentioned the coming way of foreclosures, how will they affect the housing market, okay? They will affect the housing market. I think there'll be three specific waves of foreclosures, and they will affect it, and that, that will kind of push us over the edge. You see, 10 to 15 percent is, I call it a correction. Going above 20 becomes more of a crash. And, you know, right now, if we're being conservative on our correction, 10 to 15 percent, wait till the foreclosures come, everybody. And as I said, this is a, a very ambiguous number or statistic that is hard to wrap our hands around and heads around. But in the end, there's way more than they're copping to. And, um, uh, you know, there's information that's been out there for a number of years that's not spoken about anymore. Bad word. Don't talk about the foreclosures or the volume or the defaults or delinquencies. We don't talk about those anymore. It's a bad word. Don't look over there, right, guys? So this will make the bigger impact. This will push us over the edge into that true crash territory. Mark my words. All right. We will talk about the foreclosure waves in the next video. Um, we have good intel as to how it's going to play out uh, because we talk to people who are in the know and get the information from where? The sources, the banks, the lenders, etc. So anyway, uh, that's the scoop on what's going to happen. So next video, I'm going to dive into the foreclosure waves. And speaking of foreclosures, um, guess what? I'm looking for real estate agents in Florida to join my team. Why? Because we're on a mission uh, to, to work through this uh, default and delinquency and for pre-foreclosure uh, next stage, which will take us probably a good three to five years. So lots of opportunity here. I'm looking to open up other metros where we're jumping in doing deals. I'm looking for investor buyers who want to jump along for the ride, looking for private lending partners, uh, looking to work with people who want to start and work on a syndication or equity fund as well too, so we can buy and make these things uh, rental property. So that's that's kind of in the cards for what's going on here um, as well. My short sale program is being retired, limited time to get it. Uh, we're moving towards a new, much broader based uh, foreclosure program, which will include all the short sale stuff. Every, everything that's in there now will be there, but bigger and better and more opportunities and more things to learn and more things to participate. What I've learned over the years is that, you know, the foreclosure market's interesting, the pre-foreclosure market's very interesting, and that, you know, it's not a cut and dry, I'm buying, I'm selling type of deal. There's a little more finesse involved, and there's lots of creative ways to do things, and that's what we bring to the table. Besides the baseline knowledge and the way to do it under a phenomenal system, we have the brain trust that knows how to pull the stuff off and how to sort of, you know, participate and how to structure things where everybody wins. That's the scoop. So guess what? Reach out to me if you want to talk about that. Hit me up with your e with, via my email. Put your phone number in. I'm making phone calls all day today to connect with people. I've got to get back to people, so I'm working on that this afternoon. And as I mentioned um, earlier, I appreciate the views, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I look forward to speaking with you in a couple of days.